Thank you for listening today on Revealing Wholeness, sponsored by Infinity Whole Health. Check out our website at infinitywholehealth.com, where we are revealing the eternal in each individual, the infinite in the individual. The creativity is made manifest. Limitation is let go. Now, here's your host, Dr. Troy Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness. And today I've got a really fun, I just, I love when something makes total sense and just fixes a lot of health problems. And so one of the things that we don't think much about as, oh, natural physicians like myself, but even people in general, is potassium. And you think, well, what's so great about potassium? Well, if you, if you were a farmer, and your soil was poor in potassium and you were growing corn because corn's easy and everybody wants it for corn syrup and feeding hogs and everything else. If you want to grow corn in a potassium poor soil, you're going to find that the roots, the roots have little joints in them. If you've ever pulled a full corn plant up by the roots, it is hard. It is like one, one plant that sticks its roots in and just fans out and it just, it's amazing corn roots. I, I'm just always shocked. It's why it takes so much out of the soil. Corn's really hard on soil. But if we don't have potassium, the joints within those roots and even within the plant itself, the stalk, start to get bigger. They start to get clogged and the plant cannot grow because potassium keeps those channels clear so that it can absorb water, nutrients. But what they did is they did an experiment way back in the 40s and 50s. This is 1940s and 50s where they would add certain chemicals like um, hydrochloric acid and potassium ferrocyanide, and the, the joints would all turn red, showing that the iron was getting clogged or stuck in those joints and now creating a blockage so that the plant would not get nutrients and thus starve or die. And in humans, they found out it is very, very similar. When we don't have enough potassium in our diet, our lymphatic channels get clogged and if you if this is your first time of her, hearing the word lymphatics lymphatics are one way vessels that run from the core of our body out to our our fingertips and toes and the lymphatics channels that's how we we transport white blood cells some proteins some immunoglobulins really the immune system running out but also water and some nutrients and so the lymphatics they end at the end of our fingers and toes And that fluid now moves out, water and other things, moves out and then our our veins actually absorb it and move it back to the heart. So the heart does the job of pulling fluid back, but the lymphatics are running one-way channels to get our immune system out and stay healthy so that we can detoxify, that we can clean out our body and desludgify ourselves, if that's even a word. And so potassium runs a lot of that. What What's also important to understand is potassium and sodium are very, very closely balanced in our bodies. And if we have too much sodium in our blood, we're pulling water out of cells and we're becoming dehydrated. If we have um, too much potassium, we're pushing water into the cells and that can also be problematic. So that's why we have kidneys that should be working to balance that sodium potassium all the time. But we may be lacking a lot more potassium than we are sodium. And so we're constantly pulling water out of tissues. We get waterlogged, you know, ankles or swollen ankles. And so there's this thing that, that we want to be at least aware of that potassium may be not only beneficial to my immune system running my lymphatics, but it also may be very, very important to my joints. How many of you out there have sore joints? You'll find potassium rich foods help, but here's the rub. When we cook foods, we tend to destroy a lot of the potassium that's in it and make it unbioavailable. So just to give you some statistics, 70% loss of potassium when we cook things like carrots, kohlrabi, onions, turnips, parsnips, potatoes, rutabagas, squash, pumpkins, and spinach. 60% loss in cases of cauliflower, cabbage, peas, asparagus, string beans, and Brussels sprouts. We also reduce by 50% corn, beets, and tomatoes if we cook them. And so if you've, you know, around here in the Pacific Northwest, we have this fair that's enormous. It's called the Puyallup Fair. 
Nations. And you go there and you watch these demonstrations of people where they're sitting sitting down watching somebody cook food in waterless cookware. About 15 years ago, my wife and I saw that and we're like, we got to get waterless cookware. Not only because you cook foods at a much lower temperature, which doesn't destroy the nutrients, but the more water that you use and soak the vegetables in, the more nutrients you are pulling out. So if you're thinking about, hey, I really want to start eating vegetables and up the ante in what I'm eating. Yeah, I know I should eat them raw or maybe juice them, but maybe you still want to cook them. Then I would recommend to you doing something like a waterless cookware because it is just much easier on the vegetables so that you get more nutrients because you can cook them on low takes just a little bit longer, which is okay, but the nutrient level is so much higher. So that's kind of a little plug for, for waterless cookware. But again, with, with potassium, I want you to think more so, how can I get more potassium in my diet? And in other, other podcasts, I've mentioned things like raw apple cider vinegar. I've mentioned um, raw honey. They're excellent sources for potassium. Kelp is a phenomenal source of potassium. So is alfalfa. Uh, I remember, and I've probably mentioned this on other podcasts, that when I was little, I remember going into our little shed where we had our rabbits, because we raised rabbits, and I smelled their alfalfa food, and I thought, man, does that smell good. I would go in there and pull a handful, and I would eat it. You know, my parents obviously didn't realize, hey, maybe he's low in potassium. What do you think? But Obviously, I was as well as other trace minerals because potassium and, and other trace minerals are found abundantly in alfalfa and kelp as well. So kelp may be a little bit more easy to get to for all of us, but do be cautious on the kelp that you get. Make sure that uh, you might find out where it's grown, where they're getting it. You want just, you know, off the shores of some... Uh, <laughs> around here, I think of a sarco. For those of you that have been in the Pacific Northwest, we had this this plant on the... Uh, Tacoma waterfront that just put out tons of heavy metals and chemicals into the water. And they've been, you know, they stopped it many decades ago and they've, they've cleaned it. They've tried and they've cleaned and cleaned and cleaned it. Now we, I think we rate as one of the cleaner bays in the world, but for a while we were the, we were the dirtiest bay in the world in Tacoma. I thought that's not a great distinction to have. <laughs> <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest. But anyways, you know, there's some, at least a little bit for you on potassium and sodium and how to maybe help some joint pain, help energy levels, help your body get, get healthier. Anytime that we can detox and clean up lymphatics, we're actually helping our immune system. We're helping things like cancer. We're helping things like getting sick often. Uh, any kind of disease process, you're always helping the body by cleaning the lymphatics. So again, potassium, one of the one of the things we don't think so much about, but is so, so vitally important to our health in cleaning out our body. So until next time, I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach Dr. Munson at 360-893-8586 or email him at chiroman at dr.com. That's C-H-I-R-O-M-A-N at dr.com. Check out our current workshop schedule on Facebook at Infinity Whole Health.